Sam Tenpenny with Tri-State Livestock News, the Fence Post, and Farmer and Rancher Exchange, bringing you today's daily headlines concerning fair cattle markets. The U.S. Cattlemen Association reported that White House and congressional negotiators released the long-awaited Build Back Better Act last week after the cost of the package had been whittled down from its original $3.5 trillion price tag to $1.75 trillion over a decade. What's in it for U.S. cattle producers, you ask? The bill allocates $900 million to the Department of Justice Antitrust Division for carrying out work related to competition or enforcement of antitrust laws, with an additional $100 million going to the Federal Trade Commission for work related to unfair methods of competition or enforcement of antitrust laws. The bill also provides assistance for outstanding debt on direct farm loans to economically distressed direct farm loan borrowers and outstanding debt up to $150,000 for other direct farm loan borrowers who did not receive significant amounts of payments under the market facilitation program in 2018 and 2019 or the coronavirus food assistance program in 2020. There is also an incredible amount of funding entirely dedicated to preventing and fighting wildfire and the promotion of fuels for fuels reduction projects. According to the Hagstrom report, President Biden said at a news conference in Italy on Sunday that he hopes Congress will pass the Build Back Better Act and the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, known as the Bipartisan Infrastructure Frame, Framework, or BIF, this week. According to Reuters, U.S. food safety officials have blocked a rising number of meat shipments from Australia due to fecal contamination, straining trade relations between the two countries. Labor and food safety groups attribute the problem to an Australian system that increasingly allows companies to inspect their own meat, replacing government inspectors. Because U.S. food safety inspectors only physically examine or test a subset of imported meat, according to food industry experts, the rejection suggests that other contaminated shipments may have made, it, made their way through the U.S. border. In a statement to Reuters, the U.S. Food Safety and Inspection Service downplayed the rejections data, saying its import inspection process provides confidence in the safety of a product from Australia that enters into U.S. commerce. Australia's Department of Agriculture, Water, and the Environment emphasized that Australian noncompliance has remained very low, both relative to Australia's total volume of meat and meat products exported and when compared to competitor trading partners. While Australian imports accounted for 18% of the U.S.'s total meat imports in 2019, Australia's Department of Agriculture, Water, and the Environment is concerned concerned that a continued trend of rejections could result in U.S. imposing sanctions, losses in confidence in Australia's export system, and or potential losses in market access for the United States. The uptick in rejected meat shipments highlights potential problems in Australia's domestic inspection regime, which has been transitioning from a government-run to a company-run system where regulators allow meat companies to substitute their own workers for government employees in order to inspect carcasses as they move down the processing line. The change intends to speed up operations and save companies and the government money without undermining quality. Zach Corrigan, an attorney at Food and Water Watch, a U.S. consumer and environmental advocacy group, called the rejections further evidence that these semi-privatized inspection systems allowing companies to inspect their own meat products are ineffective. According to the Oklahoma Farm Report, National Cattlemen's Beef Association President Jerry Bones said that he is pleased with the direction things are going under the 75% plan, but particularly in the Texas panhandle where the volume of negotiated trade had reached almost zero. Bone commended producers for stepping up the last several months to increase the amount of negotiated trade, which he credits to their recognition of the need for a certain level of negotiated trade and desire to avoid some kind of government mandate. Anticipating packer participation to remain a challenge in the quarter, Bone said that it did take a while to get coordinated with the big four and that some have participated better than others. NCBA has endorsed Congress's Cattle Contract Library Act 2021, but Bone said while he does not believe that mandates are the way to equalize industry leverage between packers and producers, he believes that the new bill is a way to make the business more transparent for producers. National Beef Wire reported that the American Farm Bureau Federation and National Pork Producers Council have petitioned the U.S. Supreme Court to take their case against California's Proposition 12, which would ban the sale of pork from hogs that don't meet the state's arbitrary production standards. We're asking the Supreme Court to consider the constitutionality of one state imposing regulations that reach far outside its borders and stifle interstate and international commerce, said NPPC President Jen Sorensen. In this case, arbitrary animal housing standards that lack any scientific, technical, or agricultural basis and that will only inflict harm on U.S. hog farmers. With nearly all pork currently produced in the United States failing to meet California's arbitrary standards, to continue selling pork to the 40 million consumers who live in California, which represents about 15% of the U.S. pork market, pork producers would need to switch to alternative sow housing units. Industry estimates for converting sow barns or buildings to new ones to meet the Prop 12 standards are in the billions of dollars, with consumers bearing the ultimate cost through higher pork prices. American Farm Bureau Federation President Zippy Duval said supporters of Prop 12 claimed that it would improve animal welfare and food safety, but this law fails to address either of those issues. 
farmers know the best way to care for their animals. And this law takes away the flexibility to ensure that hogs are raised in a safe environment while driving up the cost of providing food for American families. Small family farms well beyond California's borders will be hit hardest as they are forced to make expensive and unnecessary changes to their operations. This will lead to more consolidation in the pork industry and higher prices at the grocery store, meaning every family in America will ultimately pay the price for Prop 12. Until next time.